Hi, welcome back to Shotoku Tech. Yeah, when we last spoke about the Arduino Giga R1 Wi-Fi, I had gotten the newsletter announcing that it was available. I went ahead and made a short video looking at some of the new features for the Giga R1 Wi-Fi. If you go to the store, at least in the Americas, it's sold out right now, so you're going to want to sign up to be notified when it's available. But we're going to go ahead, and now that I have it in hand here, we're going to open the box. We're going to go ahead and prepare the Arduino IDE, and then we're going to run a few example sketches trying out some of the new hardware on the board. Let's go do the unbox. Okay, let's get the Giga R1 Wi-Fi out of the box. Oh, that's interesting. It's mounted onto this plastic sled. It snaps on and off, but I wasn't expecting that plastic sled. That's a pretty cool addition there. Boy, look at all those pins. Got your analogs, your digitals. The USB-C port is for powering and programming your Giga R1 Wi-Fi, and you can also connect it to a PC and simulate a keyboard and a mouse connected to your PC. USB-A supports mass storage, like a USB thumb drive. You can also plug a keyboard or a mouse in here if you like. The audio port supports audio in and out in case you have like a speech recognition program. Now the microcontroller has two cores. You can run two Arduino sketches separately at the same time, even MicroPython. And on the board here, you see we also have the display and camera risers. Oh yeah, it looks like I forgot something there. There is this add-on Wi-Fi antenna. You just remove that protective cover and pop it onto that connector next to the USB port there. I don't know what that black plastic clip is, but we'll find out. <laughs> okay, so we finished installing the board definition for the Arduino Embed OS Giga boards. You can see it's installed there. You can see here under Tools, Board Manager, there's a whole separate category, Arduino Embed OS Giga Boards, and I've selected the Arduino Giga R1. So now let's take a look at some of the example sketches. I'm gonna go over here, Examples. Yeah, right here, Examples for Arduino Giga R1. Got camera examples, nice. Kernel debug, I don't know what that is. MCU, Confirm Sketch. PDM serial plotter, Portenta LVGL. So this is display at keyboard and mouse, it looks like. Interesting. Portenta SD RAM operations, Portenta video. Interesting stuff. RPC. Yeah, so the MCU on this board has two cores that can, uh, basically you can run two programs at the same time. I believe this RPC section here is to allow you to communicate between the two two cores. We're going to explore that more. Scheduler. More stuff about that MCU. Uh, thread debug. Yeah, I'm interested in the USB mass storage. I want to use a flash disk on that A port. And there's USB HID, keyboard and mouse and Wi-Fi. Those are the ones I want to try out first. And there's also more tutorials on the docs page. There's a whole bunch of tutorials. I don't know how these line up with the example sketches we saw there. Yeah, there's a lot to go through here and we're gonna make several videos, I'm pretty sure, on the topic of the Arduino Giga R1 Wi-Fi. Okay, so we got to unbox the Arduino Giga Wi-Fi and we got to prepare the Arduino IDE with the board manager definitions for the Giga R1 Wi-Fi. Now we're ready to check out some example sketches. Uh, Wi-Fi is obviously going to be the one that I'm most interested in. And we see this, examples. Here's all of the examples down at the bottom. This is Wi-Fi web client. A lot of their example sketches now include this Arduino Secrets H include file where you would type in your SSID and password. So it doesn't have to be visible in the sketch. And you see here is the include statement for that. This particular example sketch, I, it's the one they include in examples, but I think it's going to be kind of boring because you just go to a website and then basically read whatever characters get returned when you do a get. And of course, this is over uh, 
HTTP, not HTTPS. So I wanted to check out some of the other tutorials. If you go to the docs page here under tutorials, this takes you down here. They show you what we've already done, installing the board manager definition and identifying the example sketches, etc. But down here is more Wi-Fi network examples. And this one looks particularly interesting. Yeah, here they're again talking about that Arduino Secrets H. They have WPA connection, basically connecting to your Wi-Fi network. RTC sample, similar, but apparently it's printing out the time or something. Scanning networks, yeah, that'd be great, except it'd show you all the networks that you'd pick up if you're at my house. This one looks interesting. Wi-Fi chat server, simple server that distributes any incoming messages to all connected clients. You use Telnet to your device's IP address and type. Then you can see the client's output in the serial monitor as well. So let's see what happens here. Yeah, if you don't have Telnet or if you don't know what Telnet is, you can search for it. It's basically a console driven, yeah, turn Windows features on or off. And Telnet's an individual feature that you can activate. This is in Windows 10. I'll have to check it out in Windows 11. I'm not quite sure you have, we'll see the same thing in Windows 11. But yeah, Telnet's down here. And you just check the box and it installs Telnet. And then you basically activate Telnet by using a command prompt. And you just type Telnet and the IP address. You might have to specify a port if you were uh, going to connect to a particular port, etc. So let's see what happens when we look at this sketch. Yeah, I've already, they have a copy button here for these examples, and I've already copied it. And I've included my Arduino Secrets H file here. Yeah, it's going to connect to Wi Fi. We're going to see it do that. And then it's going to wait for client connections and it's going to respond to client connections. So if they get a client connection and you type something in Telnet after connecting, then it's going to reply to you. Seems kind of interesting. So let's go ahead and get started with this one. So I'm going to go ahead and upload this. There we go. We're hitting upload. Of course, I've already selected the Giga R1 and the associated COM port that goes along with it. So while this is compiling, I'm going to go ahead and crop this out. Okay, so that chat server sketch has finished loading. I'm going to go ahead and reset this again. There we go. That's the sound of it resetting there. Now, a lot of these sketches have a clause in here where it will pause waiting for serial to start. Yeah, it'll start serial and then it'll wait for the connection of the serial monitor, right? Wall, not serial. So we'll go ahead and start the serial monitor. There we go. It's trying to connect to Wi-Fi. Yeah, well, you can tell this was configured to do Telnet because Telnet's on server port 23. Okay, we are connected. So let's see how this works. I'm going to go ahead and launch the command prompt. And we're just going to move this over here. Now keep an eye on the serial monitor down below. And let's tell net. Tell net. 192.168.1.50. There we go. Hello client. And you can see down here we have a new client. Basically, if you want to do this again, it's there's something in the code here that says if it's not already connected. If it's not already connected, do this. So you'll see here, I'll try it again, and it's not going to do anything. There, it just flashes by and comes back to the prompt. So if I close Serial Monitor, I'm going to reset this. There we go. We're going to open Serial Monitor. Now we're reconnected to Wi-Fi, got the same IP address, and we can run that Telnet command again, and we get hello a client. So that's an interesting sketch that could bear a little more work. You could Telnet in and read some value from one of the analog or digital pins. You could send 
text via Telnet and it could receive it. There's a lot of development you could do with this. It's a pretty interesting sketch. So I encountered several issues with the USB functionality on the Giga R1 Wi-Fi. I, I set out to uh, try this USB host keyboard sketch here and you can see right off the top it says use this USB host Giga repository here and you can download it as a zip as they advise. If you copy this sketch here and load it, you run into this error missing this HID host include file. And so I searched that and I come to this article here and you can see several people have basically stuck with the same problem. And uh, then it comes to find out, oh, well just use this example sketch from this repository. And so I've used the example sketch USB Giga host keyboard and we've got it loaded up on our Arduino here. I'm going to stop my serial monitor. Let's reset. There we go. We're reset. Now I'm going to load my serial monitor. We should see something come up here. We'll give it a sec. Make sure we're selected the right device and port. Sure. And sad to say, you're not seeing anything come up in Serial Monitor like it's supposed to. Uh, I'm a little disappointed in that. So both the tutorial sketch on the Arduino website is flawed. And I don't know what to make of this USB host Giga not working. It should just be a simple matter of running that sketch after I install the library. And it's not working, as you can see. The other USB example, they go on to talk about that as well. Oh, yeah, same experience USB flash drive examples do not compile after installing the following. So you have to install this Arduino USB host embed 5. Let's make sure we have that installed in our library manager just to be sure. Library manager. Yeah, you can see I have that installed. Yeah, there's several things that they're talking about in this article. You have to use the name of the device. Yeah, see, they came back and they tried to answer the questions. Yeah, so they're saying the USB drive should be FAT32 MBR partition scheme. And then they also go on to inform you that in the code, it's the name of the USB stick. Name of the USB stick. Well, I have that stick in my computer right now and I've named it USB. You can see right there the disk label. Let's just go ahead and look at properties. So I went and formatted it FAT32 and I made it USB is the name of the device. And then in the sketch, let's take a close look. Yeah, when you initialize it, you use the name of the USB stick. And then there's, let's see, USB file read sketch. So Let's see. Yeah. So when you do an F open, it's F open slash name of the disk and then name of the file. And so I had this Arduino text file ready to go. But when we send this sketch over, it just causes it to crash. And you can tell it's crashing because you've got the alternating for fast red lights, for slow red lights. You have to press reset twice and then send another sketch that isn't going to cause it to crash. So that's how you recover if you see the flashing red lights on your Arduino Giga R1 Wi-Fi. So anyway, you know, it's a, it's a bit of a disappointment. I'm going to go ahead and work through some more example sketches and I'll be reporting on those things that I find working. And I'll definitely be revisiting these until I'm successful at making these work. We did get Wi-Fi working, so there's a lot of interesting things to explore there with the Giga R1 Wi-Fi. I want to check out, you know, see if we can see any difference in performance between the Giga R1 Wi-Fi and other Arduino products. But anyway, thanks for checking in on the Arduino Giga R1 Wi-Fi with me. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed checking out some of the example sketches on the new Arduino Giga R1 Wi-Fi. Leave a comment down below on what example sketches you'd like me to try next. 
Give this video a like, and before you go watch more of my Arduino videos, please click on subscribe. Thank you very much.